My wife likes to sew, and I keep seeing her lay out pattern shapes on pieces of fabric. It looks like she's trying to solve a puzzle, especially with really expensive fabric. She wants to waste the least amount possible, so I decided to solve the puzzle for her. Showing any of the sewing patterns she uses might be a copyright issue, so for the sake of this video, I'll design my own sewing pattern, and we'll use it for the explanations in the rest of the video. Okay, first let's go over my lovely sewing pattern to understand what information we need to extract from it. Most sewing patterns consist of layers. One of the layers consists of a bunch of geometric and general information. This arrow, which says grain line next to it, tells me what orientation the pattern needs to be in. This arrow, that says fold, means we need to fold along this side of the pattern and create a mirror image. And cut two here, for example, means there should be two copies of this pattern. And the other layers consist of the patterns themselves in different sizes. So for example, layer zero would be the direction layer, layer one would be size small, layer two would be size medium, and so on. By the way, this sewing pattern is just for helping me explain things. It won't help you make an actual bud warmer. I have a different sewing pattern for that. Leave a comment below if you're interested. Anyways, in order to detect all of the information I just described, I wanted to use image recognition tools. So the first step of the script is to convert this PDF into images. The PyMu PDF module worked best for me, though I still ran into some issues. Turns out that the PDF format is crazy complicated, and sometimes when converting to images, the image simply comes out blank. I'm still not sure why. But it works well for most of the patterns I tested, so let's piss off future me and ignore this problem for now. You might notice that each size of the pattern has a different dashed line. This was the case in all the patterns I tested. So to have a continuous contour to work with, I first kind of mashed the dashed lines together using OpenCV's erode and dilate functions. Here are the original patterns. I first erode the image to combine the dashed lines, but I don't want to deform the pattern too much, so I then dilate the image to reduce the erosion a bit. Next step is detecting the patterns. I do this using OpenCV's find contours function. I take into account the outermost contours, and I also look for holes inside the pattern. Once I have the contours which define the patterns, I go to the next step, which is detecting the direction arrows, like the grain line and the fold line. I first considered using some arrow detection mechanism, but after looking into it, I decided to go for just finding slim objects inside the detected patterns. This seems to work really well for now. I then take into account only the patterns which have an arrow in them, because my wife told me so. Probably because patterns that don't have any direction arrows in them need to be cut from other pieces of fabric, like lining and so on. So placing them on the main fabric is unnecessary. Every pattern has a pattern number assigned to it, and we can see that the pattern without a direction arrow in it isn't taken into account. Next up is reading the text. So looking inside the pattern and around the direction arrows for the information we talked about, like grain line, fold, and number of copies. Now there's a simple user interface to let my wife choose which patterns to actually place on the fabric. All right, this first part was just the preamble before we get to the fun part, the optimization, which is what got me interested in this project in the first place. Okay, so like I said earlier, the optimization is trying to place the sewing patterns in such a way that they are as packed together as possible and also take up the least amount of fabric length. It's doing this by trying to minimize a cost function. I give a cost to the placement of the sewing patterns so that the more tightly packed the patterns are, the lower the cost. The optimization algorithm I'm using is the Nelder Mead algorithm. I'll share a link to a very clear explanation of how it works. Essentially, for a two-dimensional problem, it's a constantly changing triangle where the cost is calculated at every vertex and the triangle vertices constantly move toward the lowest cost. The process of the pattern placement was to first place the pattern with the largest area at the bottom left. Not sure if this is optimal, but that's the method I used for the initial placement. Next up, I needed to find a method to pack the other pattern pieces together while preventing any overlap. I drew inspiration from a method I read about called NFP or no-fit polygon. The no-fit polygon region 
defines a set of possible locations between two polygons so that they touch but don't overlap. That's exactly what I needed. And in that no-fit polygon region, I needed to choose the location with the lowest cost. I don't know what the no-fit polygon region is though, I have to find it. To do that, I first place the geometric center of the newly added pattern on one of the vertices of the already placed patterns. This however results in an overlap, and that's where the Neldermead algorithm comes in. How well the Neldermead algorithm works however is dependent on the cost function I give it. I needed to design the cost function so that it steers the pattern away from the high cost overlap region towards the no fit polygon region, which is a lower cost solution. Here are the main things that the cost function was designed to reward or penalize. Overlapping results in a higher cost. The more overlap there is, the higher the cost. Distance between patterns results in higher costs. So the further away the patterns are, the higher the cost. Location along the fabric length is penalized, so the farther away the pattern is from the origin along the length of the fabric, the more it's penalized. And there's also a very high cost to being outside the bounds of the fabric altogether. So once I placed the new pattern in an overlap, I ran the Neldermead algorithm and it immediately moved the pattern towards the no-fit polygon region. The cost is in the title of the graph. We can see it slowly converge to the lowest value which is being as close as possible to the other pattern and also trying to be as close to zero on the x-axis as possible to shorten the necessary fabric length. I then repeat this process. I place the geometric center of the new pattern on all the vertices of the already placed patterns one by one, run the Nildermead algorithm and record the cost I got. I then record the lowest cost from all these iterations. I repeat these steps for all the remaining patterns and the pattern with the lowest cost is the one that gets placed on the fabric. All these steps are repeated until all the patterns are placed on the fabric. Let's run the optimization on my sewing pattern and see it at work. The script runtime is very variable, since it depends on how many patterns I have, how accurate I want the patterns to be, and so on. It took me anywhere from a few minutes on a small number of patterns to more than half an hour for a sewing pattern with around 15 pieces to place. There are many improvements I can make to reduce the runtime. For example, every time I add a new pattern, I rerun the Neldermead algorithm on the vertices of every one of the already placed patterns. This is overkill since the algorithm usually converges to the same location, at least for vertices that are close to each other. Also, not all the vertices are feasible. I can check beforehand if there's even enough area for the pattern to be placed in that area. But since my wife just needs to run it once for every new sewing project she starts, this runtime is pretty negligible for her. I might make some more improvements in the optimization itself or its runtime, maybe also make the GUI more convenient, there's lots to do. I'll have to see if she continues using it or not. If you want to have a look at the code, there's a link to the GitHub repository in the description. You're welcome to leave any recommendations for improvements in the comments below. In any case, this was a fun project, and I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.